Hi, my name is Massimo Francese or also known as Interceptor One to One. If you've been following my blogs, you've read a few articles about getting the best coloring video um, with your uh, Panasonic GH5, but this generally applies to uh, any uh, camera that you want to use for underwater video, including digital cameras and video cameras. Today I want to focus on uh, editing and particularly into color correction because I've seen um, a number of tutorials uh, online which I believe are broadly incorrect um, and actually it is not that difficult to color correct and grade your underwater footage if you have following, been following the right steps when the footage was acquired and this include having the right equipment including white balance slates, filters, uh, lights of course, um, setting the camera with the best setting to capture all the information that the sensor is capable to acquire and then um, importing this into your editor and correcting it to taste uh, because I don't believe there is a, a, an absolute correct way to process uh, color in underwater video but it's all down to personal taste. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, uh, my uh, workflow on the Final Cut Pro and uh, you will see that it's actually not that difficult to get colors that are um, pleasing to the eye. Final Cut Pro 10 and have a look at how to grade uh, some footage. So let's create a test uh, project I'm going to leave the settings as they are and then identify some clips 254 right okay so this is a typical example of what uh, footage looks like once imported directly from camera because we acquired the footage with a flat profile it looks flat as it should be and this is not something that we would like to see in our videos really we got a nice selection already done and we drag the selection into the timeline and you can see that it keeps looking pretty dire. The first thing we do is to restore back uh, the camera uh, dynamic range and we do this by applying a camera LUT. This already changes to a good extent the footage and now we go into the color and effect workspace to see um, what is the way doing with um, our footage. These are our effects um, the first thing that I do is to balance color. I can either do it with a white balance or with automatic. Uh, Final Cut Pro 10 is quite smart, so most of the time the automatic setting uh, does produce uh, pretty good uh, results. You can see here uh, the balance between red, green and blue is in a certain way. Applied balance color and it brings it back as it was. This footage was balanced already in camera, but obviously because we are here at 50 meters, um, you know, it can be that this is still not good enough. So adjusted the, the footage in a way that we can actually look at it in a, and it's more pleasant. The second thing I do is to use color wheels. Um, a look at what is the situation of the uh, Luma. Here you can see this deep line is sitting around 17 to 31 is where most of the exposure is. And uh, the first thing I do is if I need to bring a little bit the exposure up, and get that line to around 25 um, you can see that the footage is improved but still looks pretty washed out uh, so what I do typically is to take down the shadow a little not to the point of clipping see the luma is still positive and then pull up the highlights to increase the dynamic range of the footage I do a check with my luma and saturation by scrubbing the clip to see if for any reason I have exceeded and if I do I will see some bars coming up I mean I have to push this quite a lot before I see anything um, and this is because we shot in a, in, a, in a certain way so it's very difficult to make this clip uh, actually clip the highlights uh, the other thing we need to be careful is also the colors because I worked with a reduced saturation. The colors are all safely within the range. You see, they never go up 
uh, have reached the um, uh, the maximum. So um, bring down the shadows a bit, bring up the highlights, give a more contrasty look. If you want, you can also take down the midtones to give an even more contrasty look. And then you can either adjust the saturation, and I tend to adjust not the overall saturation, but just the saturation of the midtones to give him the look you like and the blue you like. You can see here the blue is changing. So that's um, something you can do, or you can play with effects such as vibrancy. I'll go back to the effects and maybe take, see the difference in vibrancy. So vibrancy stretches a little bit the color like uh, we did. Um, so see the different effect on the curves of vibrancy here, or the effect we do with color wheels. It is not the same, as you can see, see? So while the saturation of the midtones or the saturation of the clip is having a certain effect that way, Vibrancy is working in a slightly uh, different fashion. To the saturation. See? So it, it kind of is pulling the dynamic range of the color if you like. Okay, so this is something that to my like is on my liking right now. It's a really deep blue. Um, the final thing that I do is to also use some custom LUTs to give uh, achieve some other look. Uh, I like uh, really the neutral film ones and this is really giving us a very very deep blue already just by applying the LUT uh, which means maybe we need to pull down with the saturation a little and this is the resulting footage that we have. So this is where we started which is here very bland and this is the result after applying the camera lot and all our effects which is a totally different place than where we started. Now, I like to have my image quite dark with very rich blues. Um, that's more of an aesthetic. Some other people like to have less rich blues, um, and that's really down to uh, personal preference. Uh, but I hope um, I've demonstrated to you how um, with not much, uh, you know, this is not very complicated, uh, you can achieve decent color and it all starts from having the right starting point with the white balancing camera, the non-saturated, um, you know, flat profile and then making sure you don't clip your highlights or your blacks and then you have a material that you can really work with because despite anything, this material here to start is a really good starting point to get you the blues uh, that you want uh, later on without any problem, without any clipping. If you found this video useful, you may want to subscribe to my channel. There is a, um, an icon on the bottom right side of the screen, as well as following my blog, interceptor121.com, which is full of fairly technical articles to take your underwater photography and videography forward. Thank you for watching.